as we, as we wrap up this sermon series, it's, it's an I am statement that Jesus makes that, that if we will allow it to, I believe God can use this to really awaken something in us to the depths of God's love for us. Uh, we're wrapping up the series, I Am, and Jesus makes this incredible statement, I am the light of the world. Amazing, right? I am the light of the world. And when Jesus makes this statement, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and give away the ending of the sermon right here at the start so that you can just kind of keep this idea in your mind the whole time. When Jesus says, I am the light of the world, he is talking about, I believe, as I understand the text, that he is the one who makes his unseen love for you and for me and for everyone you know, visible. He is this God who makes the unseen things seen. And that's pretty cool, right? I mean, we love seeing things that we can't see. I, I remember when I was a kid, I'd watch Superman. Any of y'all ever watch Superman? I want to show of hands. Like there's 20 of us in this room that have, uh, how many of y'all have ever heard of Superman? I want to make sure you're with me this morning, okay? That's half of us, that's great. Um, the rest of y'all, you gotta get out more. But anyway, here we go. Superman, man, he had that X-ray vision, right? You know, and I'm not talking about the laser beam that could cut through stuff, right? I'm talking about how Superman had this X-ray vision where he could see unseen, unseen things. He could see through walls, and I always thought that was pretty cool. And then I read, I kid you not, about a month ago, uh, a paper that MIT put out uh, that said they have the, these uh, augmented uh, reality headsets, that, that if you wear this headset, that it's actually x-ray vision. And, and I didn't see any pictures of the x-ray vision. I have no idea about it, but MIT, check it out, augmented reality headset. You put on this headset, and apparently you're going to be able to see through walls. And I thought, man, that'll be so cool cool. And then I thought of somebody dri driving down my street with this augmented reality headset. And I thought, that's not going to be so cool if they really do develop that. But still, we love to see unseen things, right? I, I know there's military tech. And maybe it's not x-ray vision, but man, it is heat signature vision, right? And before they breach a room, they can see through the wall and they can see the heat signature of how many people are in the room, where they're positioned. And you want that technology if you're going to be breaking into that room and, and kind of you know subduing the bad guys. So, so I'm glad they have that technology. We love seeing unseen things. About a month ago, I was with a couple of buddies out in the country, and, and, and we had this, this night vision scope. I mean, this thing was pretty amazing. It was this night vision, and it was thermal vision, and you look through this scope, and I'm telling you, it's out in the country. There's no ambient light, no street lights. It was pitch dark. The, the moon wasn't shining, but you look through this, this whatever this contraption was, and it turned the night to day. And it wasn't just like you could see heat signatures out there 300 yards away. I'm telling you, if there had been a bear, you could have seen a bear. If there had been a deer, a hog, a rabbit 300 miles away, you could have seen that. You could see trees, you could see fences, you could see boulders, you could see everything. It's amazing. We love seeing unseen things. Well, when Jesus makes this statement, I am the light of the world. He is telling us that he illuminates this God who is often unseen, this God who often seems like he is distant and removed and unkind and uncaring. He is the master at making the unseen things. What he's saying is he's better than Superman and MIT and military tech and this scope that I got to look through out in the country. He's better than that combined. And when it says that Jesus is the light of the world, he illuminates what does he illuminate? He illuminates God, and the Bible says that God is love. What he is doing is he's illuminating, he's making his unseen love for us seen. 
He makes this statement in the Gospel of John. Let me invite you to open your Bible uh, to the Gospel of John. We're gonna read the first seven verses. And, and I'm gonna ask you to stand, so go ahead and stand. And, and as you stand, I'm gonna read through the text, but, but you follow along. And, and by standing, I'm inviting you to just make the declaration, God, I'm standing in honor of your word because your word is my authority for faith and practice. Students, that means when we say it's our authority for faith, God's word is our authority for what we believe. We don't believe what society says or what cancel culture says. We believe what God says. His word is our authority for faith and it's our authority for practice. It's our authority for how we're going to live our life. We're not just gonna live our life like our buddies or like we want to. We're gonna live our life in line with what God teaches us in his word. In the Gospel of John, chapter nine, it says this. As he passed by, he saw a blind man from birth, and his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, it was not that this man sinned, or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, will you say this with me? I am the light of the world. Having said these things, he spit on the ground and made mud with the saliva. Then he anointed the man's eyes with the mud and said to him, go and wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sin. So he went and washed and came back seeing. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for honoring God and his word. Grab a seat and we're gonna dive in. When I hear Jesus saying, I am the light of the world, here is what I believe Jesus is saying to us. Jesus works to make his unseen love seen. Jesus works to make his unseen love seen. What I want you to do for me, just for a moment, is we're gonna look now at Jesus' works. We're, we're gonna set aside the idea of, of how cool it is to see unseen themes. We, we want x-ray tech. We wanna be able to see what others can't see. And, and let's just focus over here for a moment on how Jesus works. Did you know the Bible says that Jesus is working in your life? And you go, well, I sure can't tell it. The Bible says that Jesus is working in your life 24 seven. Jesus is working in our world. Jesus is working in everyone around you. Do you know it says in the book of Psalms that God neither slumbers nor sleeps. Jesus himself said, my father is working until now and I am working. That means that Jesus is working nonstop. He neither slumbers nor sleeps. Jesus is working in your life. He's working in the lives of the people around you. He's working in the heart of every lost person. He is working in the world around us. You go, if Jesus is so busy and if he's working so much, what is it that Jesus is doing? Well, first of all, Jesus is working in you to give you a desire for him. Do you know you wouldn't even be here at church today if the Holy Spirit wasn't inside you working and giving you a desire to be here, a desire to hear from God? Here's where it says that in Scripture. For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Did you know the Bible says that you and I all have sinned and come short of the glory of God? It actually says that our throat is an open grave. Apart from Jesus, there is nothing commendable in us. But in Jesus Christ, we receive the righteousness of Jesus and the Holy Spirit dwells within us and he gives us this desire for God, this hunger for God. And then he gives us the power to actually pursue Jesus and follow Jesus and obey Jesus. Jesus is working in you the biggest evidence of that is that you are here this morning. What else is Jesus doing? Well, he's holding all things together. Listen to this verse. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. See, Jesus is working in your life, holding your life together. He's working in the world, holding the world together. Did you know Jesus is even into politics? And some of y'all are going, oh, don't go there, preacher. Oh, I'm going there. Did you know it says in the book of Proverbs, the king's heart 
is a stream of water in the hands of the Lord. He directs it wherever he will. That means every leader, every king, every government official, their heart is like it's in the hands of God and and he's directing it like the, the banks of a river direct the flow of the water. And you go, does that mean every leader in the world is a follower of Jesus? No, it just means that Jesus is God and Jesus is sovereign and he is the king over all the kings and he's the one who's ultimately in charge. And it means that our world is not spinning aimlessly out of control, but it means that Jesus is directing all of creation to one point in time when you and I will stand before Jesus and some will bow and confess him as Lord and others will turn away in shame. But Jesus is saying that he is holding all things together and the world's not spinning out of control, it just looks like it is. And you know what else he's doing? He's comforting you. Listen to this verse. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. In those times when you're going through it on the dark night of your soul and it seems like God's a thousand miles away, Jesus is going, it just seems that way. But let me tell you something, I am here. He is near to the brokenhearted. He is working in your life to comfort you. He's guiding. The Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their life. God is actually intimately involved in every detail of your life. He's giving wisdom to those who ask. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all generously. What is he doing? He's convicting you of sin. Uh, the Bible says very clearly, and when he comes, he'll convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. The Holy Spirit is active in your life today, and it's kind I like that hot cold game, you know? And when you're walking away from the Lord and going in directions he doesn't want you to go, I mean, the Holy Spirit is inside you going cold, cold, cold. You're getting colder, colder, colder. And you go, what? And you kind of turn around, hot, warmer, warmer, warmer. Keep going that direction. See, the Holy Spirit is doing that in your life every day. And apart from the restraining grace of the Spirit, your life would tumble out of control. Jesus said, I am involved in your life. Forgiving. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let's not forget, he's working to prepare a place for us. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to be where I am. Great news. This morning, maybe you came in here thinking, God is a million miles away. God does not care about me. God is letting my life fall apart. And Jesus is going, you gotta understand something. I am working. Where do we get that? We get it right out of the text. Jesus answered, it was not that this man sinned or his parents sinned, but that the works of God. Jesus said, I am working. So now it's legitimate to stop and say, if Jesus is working overtime 24-7, What's the point of all of his labor? Uh, this, this one who says, I'm the light of the world. What is the point of all of his labor? The point is to make his unseen love seen. Where do we get that? From the text. Jesus answered, it was not that this man sinned or his parents sinned, but that the works of God. Do you see? Jesus is working. The works of God might be displayed in him. Everything that Jesus is doing in your life. Students, think about this. Jesus is working in your life and he says, I am working to display God. The Bible says very clearly, God is love. So what is Jesus displaying about God? Well, we're right up there at the top of the list. We'd all have to agree. It is the depth of God's love for you and for me. Let's kind of break down the text. Jesus is moving along and, and he encounters a man who is born blind. That means this guy has never seen a day in his life. He has never looked into his father's face. He's never looked into his mother's eyes. Oh, he's heard the tenderness in their voice. He's felt the tenderness of their embrace, but he has never looked into their face. For that matter, he's never seen an eagle soaring in the sky. Uh, this man had never seen a field of wildflowers, a bunch of blue bonnets on the side of the road and Jesus comes along and, and Jesus spits and scoops down some of the dirt and he makes, and I quote, 
made mud with the saliva. Don't you imagine the blind guys going, uh, Jesus, you know I'm deaf. Uh, you know I'm blind, not deaf, right? I heard you spit. <laughs> but go ahead and make a mud pie if you want to. At this point, I'm desperate. I'll, 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 I'll try anything. Go ahead and just apply it to my eyes. So Jesus applies this, this paste of mud to his eyes, and he says, go and wash. And the guy goes and wash, and I love the Bible. It just says he came back seeing. He came back seeing. Now here's the question. Why? Why did Jesus heal this blind man? The disciples ask him that. Well, what, what are you doing? Well, why are you doing this? And he goes, I healed this blind man to display the works of God. I'm working, I'm convicting, I'm comforting, I'm guiding, I'm forgiving. I'm doing this work to shine the spotlight on the love of God. I am shining the spotlight on the reality that God is for you, that God is a good, good father, that God loves you, that God wants you to be a member of his forever family. When I think of the way Jesus works, display the unseen love of God, I don't know why, but it takes me back to my childhood when I was maybe about four years old. I, I wasn't in school yet. My brother and sister, who are both older, were playing in the backyard, and I was with them. And, and they had climbed up into the tree, uh, which we had this little platform built. It wasn't a true tree house, but it was a little platform up in this tree. And, and, and my dad had nailed these wooden steps uh, up the trunk of the tree. And, and so my brother and sister had climbed up there and were inviting me up there. And imagine that. I was going to get to play with my brother and sister, so I'm just climbing up these steps. Well, on the way up, uh, one of the wooden steps broke, but the nail that was holding the wooden step into the trunk didn't break. And, and, and so I'm kind of trying to grab a hold as the wooden step on my feet broke. And on the way down, long story short, my arm catches the nail and it just kind of really gashes into my arm and, and it just kind of flays it back like that. Aren't you glad I'm wearing long sleeves today? That was intentional. And about that time, I guess my dad heard the commotion. And my dad came over and, and he didn't even break his stride. He just looked down and he said, yep, that's gonna need stitches. <laughs> I remember as a four-year-old thinking, that wasn't exactly the response I was expecting. Uh, pretty soon my mom came rushing out of the house and she had towels and bandages and, and she bandaged up my arm and, and, and just, you know, grabbed me up and made a beeline for the car and, and, and you could tell she was so worried and there were tears in her eyes. And, and the truth is, if you ask me, did I go to the emergency room hospital? I don't remember where I went, four years old, I can't remember. I just remember as soon as my mom picked me up in her arms, I knew I was going to be okay because I was held by one who loves me so much. Now, as I got older, because that kind of stayed with me, and I began to convince myself that my dad doesn't really love me, and, and, and then it dawned on me, I don't know when, probably yesterday, I'm not sure, but, but you know, it dawned on me at some point that my dad actually loved me very deeply, and my dad didn't break stride because he was making a beeline to the house, and he was saying, honey, get out there, Gary's ripped his arm open, and my dad was grabbing his keys, and my dad was making a beeline to the car and getting my brother and sister in the car and we were all racing to the hospital as my mom held me in her arms. See, the reality is I couldn't see my father's love, but it didn't make my father's love less real. As a matter of fact, I, at some point, not long after that, I can tell you, I never doubted whether or not my mom and my dad loved me with all of their heart. And Jesus is saying, you gotta understand something. I'm working in your life and I'm forgiving you. I'm giving you wisdom. I'm guiding your steps. I'm, I'm convicting you of your sin. I'm right there. I'm holding you in my arms because I want you to see the depths of my love for you. I want you to understand. 
I made you. I created you. And I want you to spend eternity with me. Now, we can ask the question, okay? So Jesus, you said you're the light of the world. And what you're doing is you're working as the light of the world to illuminate God's unseen love for us. So what's the right response? How should we respond to this one who declares, I am the light of the world? My suggestion is this, number one, love the light. His name is Jesus. Love him back. The reality is uh, Jesus is working in your life. And remember this as you think about what he's doing. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights with whom there's no variation or shadow due to change. Uh, Where is Jesus working in your life? What is Jesus doing? Are you breathing right now? If you're breathing right now, raise your hand. I wanna see how many of y'all are breathing. Okay, that's 90% of us. The rest... We're gonna call, you know, 911, but not until after the sermon. I wanna finish, okay? So, so here's the deal. You're breathing right now. Do you know that God is the one who gives your lungs the capacity to breathe? Did you eat anything this past week? Uh, do you have a future in heaven that nothing can destroy? Has God forgiven every sin that you've confessed to him? Has he given you a talent so that you can get a job and keep a job and make money and provide for your family? How has God blessed you this past week? Do you have a roof over your head? Every one of those things. Jesus said, it's just me shining the spotlight on my love for you, which is so often hidden from you. Let me try to give an an analogy. Who has ever loved you like Jesus loves you? And I realize some of you have not had great parents, uh, but, but I still believe the closest you're ever gonna come uh, this side of heaven to the love of Jesus is the love of a parent. Think about what they've done for you. You were born and immediately they started changing your diaper, your diaper, not just number one. (laughs) That's love. And they started feeding you and they clothed you and they they made sure you had a roof over your head, right? And then as time goes on, uh, they're helping you with your homework and they probably helped you buy your first car and some of y'all are right there going, no, 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 my parents didn't help me. Okay, boo-hoo, they didn't help you buy your first car, but look at all the other things that they've done for you. And your parents were there up late at night worrying about you and praying for you when you were too foolish to worry about yourself or pray for yourself, why did they do that? Why did they do that and never ask for payment? I looked up on salary.com. Maybe you've done this before. Moms, you're gonna love this illustration. Forget about dads, their contribution, just moms alone. Salary.com, check it out. Uh, 2019 numbers, for some reason I couldn't find 2023 numbers, but how much would it cost to hire someone to do all the things that a mom does for a child for a given year? And salary.com says 2019 numbers, $178,000 a year is what you'd have to pay. Can we all just say amen? Yes, we love moms, amen? All right, now, now check this out. If you're 15 years old, students, do you realize you're already into your mom for about $2.6 million? Think about that the next time your mom says, why didn't you call me back? Would you rather her say, you owe me 2.6 million? (laughs) Or would you rather just call her back, amen? Why does a mom, why does a dad do all of that for free? And yes, I already know some of you have abusive parents, but but you just a picture the kind of parent that I'm talking about. Why does that parent do that for free? Two reasons. Number one, because they love you. And number two, because they just want you to love them back. And Jesus is saying, I love you. I'm working in your life to display that love because I love you and because I just want you to love me back. 
How do we respond to I am the light of the world? How about this? Number one, love the light, love Jesus. The way you do that is initially by repenting of your sin and placing your faith and your trust in Jesus and by confessing Jesus as your Lord. Jesus, I make you the king of my life. You do that initially by trusting in Jesus for salvation, but you do that daily by diving into his word and listening to his voice and confessing your sin and following in obedience, pursuing Jesus. Love him back, number one. Number two. Number one, love the light. Number two, Jesus says, I'm the light of the world. How do we respond? Love the light. And second, be the light. Jesus says in another place, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Be the light. Jesus says, you are are the light of the world. As long as I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. When I leave, you are the light of the world. Now, now, what does that mean that we're the light? Let me illustrate it like this. Out in the country where I grew up, I'm telling you, it's dark, no ambient light, no street lights. If the moon ain't shining, it's dark. And that's how I know there are such things like Bogey Creek monsters. They're real. They lurk in the shadows. That's why you do not go outside at night if you live in the country. Amen. Now listen to me. Uh, now, now if the sun, if the, if the moon is up and there's a full moon, I'm telling you that full moon just just illuminates everything. You can walk outside, even out in the country, no ambient light with no flashlight. It, it just kind of turns the night to day. But every one of us, we know enough science to know that the moon is not actually producing that light. The moon is just what? Help me out. Reflecting it off of the sun. And so here's what Jesus is saying. You're the light. Be the light. See, when you do what I do, when you forgive someone who doesn't deserve to be forgiven, when you love even your enemies, when you listen, be quick to hear, slow to speak and slow to anger for the anger of man does not achieve the righteousness of God. See, when you start listening to people, when you start serving people, when you start doing the works that Jesus does, what you're doing is you're reflecting the light of Jesus' love and you're making that love visible for them to see. He's saying, reflect my light to the people around you. Do you ever watch that show, Invisible Man? Y'all don't even worry about it. Just Google it something later. Okay, me either. It was a dumb show. I didn't like it. But I still saw enough of it to know that there was this invisible man. Trust, if you live out in the country and you're dealing with Bogey Creek monsters, you don't want to think of invisible men in addition to that. I hated that show. But, but I watched enough of it to know that, that the only way you could make the invisible man visible was to throw something on the invisible man, maybe dirt or dust or paint. And then all of a sudden, you could see the outline of the invisible man. And Jesus is saying, when you are the light, when you do the works that I do, when you do them for others, you're the paint and you're illuminating this light whose name is Jesus, who loves the people around you with all of his heart. So how do we respond to Jesus' declaration? I am, I am the light of the world. May we respond by loving the light. Jesus, you've shown me your love and I'm gonna love you back this week. May we respond by being the light. Jesus, I'm gonna do for others what you've done for me so they can see the love that I've seen in you. I'm gonna pray. Richard's gonna come and just dismiss us. Uh, my prayer is that you will not leave this place, though, without responding, taking a step. And for some of you, that step may be to receive the light who is Jesus. And at the next step room, you can do that. We'll, we'll be back there. I'll be back there. And we'll tell you how you can make a step towards Jesus today. We'll tell you how you can give your life to Jesus. Maybe you wanna know about membership. Maybe you want somebody to pray 
pray for you today. Richard's gonna come and dismiss us right after I pray. And then you, you take a step towards Jesus today. Lord, we love you and we thank you for the way that you have loved us and shown your love to us. Thank you, Jesus, for being the light of the world. We pray in Jesus' name, amen.